So hello Mr. Gupta, how are you? Hi Louis, how are you? I'm fine. At first I'd like to, to, to be directly focused on the topic, so can you please uh, briefly introduce some objects, some toys you've designed? Oh sure. You know, one, one of the toys which I like very, very much and which I designed about 20 years back is this very simple pump and with this homemade pump children can inflate a balloon. So if I take a balloon, I'll open this and show you later. But first show you what it does. Is that a child can just move the two uh, film reels and not only does the balloon get inflated, but they can actually pop the balloon. It's a very, very nice pump. It's a positive displacement pump. And this is made from a old bicycle tube. This black rubber is a old bicycle tube. And these are, this is a, it's a film can. Old time cameras used to have a reel, now everyone has a mobile and a digital camera. And what we have done is that we've just made a small valve over here. This is a kind of flap valve which can open and close. So if I blow from here, air will pass through. But can I suck in air? I can't suck in air. So it's like one way traffic. This is green light and this is red light. This is stop and this is go. So that's what a valve is. You made a very efficient, this is my suction valve and this black tube about seven or eight inches long. This is like the bellows, uh, which I'm going to move like this. Just a through tube, there's nothing inside this. This is another film can with a lid and I made a hole in the lid and similarly I have made another valve which can open and close. So this is my delivery valve and for the air to come out this is a stiff straw and a tube. That's it. So children can dismantle the whole toy and they can put it back again. There are no glass parts and once they assemble it and then they can, if a child can inflate a balloon with the toy which means it's a very good quality uh, pump with very few leakages because had there been leakages they would not be able to inflate. Now this is a very simple electric motor. Uh, the most expensive thing is a torch battery which is 1.5 volts. One, once again a uh, cycle tube uh, which keeps two safety pins in contact with the plus and the minus of the battery. Uh, this is a magnet. A small ferrite oh. magnet, mm. a weak magnet, mm. and you can put it with rubber band. Okay. And because okay. the body is made from mild steel, the magnet will anyway stick. Okay. This is more like a step knee. If sometimes this breaks, okay. you can okay. use this. That's mm. the purpose of it. So this is 1.5 volts across this. If you were to attach a small torch bulb, it would glow. And then you take one coil. This is a coil made from one meter of insulated copper wire. And I'll just go into the details later. But this is what this motor does. Oh. It's, a, it's a spinning motor. It's a very, very delightful motor. It takes less than 10 minutes to make it. And it's a great joy for you. Now the main part, this is very easy to make. You take one meter of insulated copper wire, which is used for motor rewinding, copper inside with a layer of enamel to insulate it. And you wind it in an old battery, about 10, 12 turns. Mm -hmm. Now because it's insulated, if I put it, no current will flow. Now what you do is, and this is the heart of the matter, scrape one side completely and a peel of insulation will come out and you'll see shining copper all over. On the other side, what you do is scrape the top, the right and the left, only three sides. But spare the base. Now over here you can still see the brown insulation like this. Now this is like a switch. Whenever the copper is in contact, current flows. Whenever the insulation comes, switch off. On off, on off in every rotation. And this is like a brush or a commutator in a DC motor. Very simple, very easy to make. And children can have loads of fun with a motor like this. Very simple. So you can put another battery. What happens with three volts, take two meters of wire, change the air gap. Children can make one small difference and see what it makes what difference it makes to the performance of the motor and the third of course I'll show four toys okay, this please. is another one which we actually I bought it in, in in the science city very close to Paris about seven years back when I went there it was a Chinese toy about 10 euros 
And I came back and I dismantled the whole thing. And I thought that uh, and within a day we were able to make our own. And this is a levitating pencil. First I'll just show you what it does. Here is the pencil, then I'll explain. So it spins, it levitates, and you can also write with this pencil. And as you can see, there are six magnets, two in this pencil, four in the base of this rubber. And they are placed in a particular orientation. So if you take a magnet, first stick it to the front magnet. If it sticks, they must be opposite poles. Mm -hmm. They are not south, so they are attracting. And that's what you do in the front of this. They should be attracting. North south, north south, opposite poles. This is the orientation of the front two magnets. The red ones, first you stick it. They are opposite poles and then you flip it over. Now they are similar poles and they are repelling each other. So the rare ones are repelling each other and they are pushing the pencil away. They are lifting the pencil. The front ones are pulling it towards it. So if I just put my finger and I adjust the distance, you can see that I should be able to make it hang on my finger and give it a little twirl. It's like a magnetically levitating pencil. Great fun for children. And in many parts of the world, there are maglev cranes. If you go to China, you know, you can, from Beijing airport, you can take a maglev train and 70 kilometers, you can zip in 10 minutes, come to the old city. And so children can at least get a glimpse of some of the principles through this toy. The fourth one, which I like very much, is a very simple generator. This is called as a torch. It's like a syringe torch. Now these are two very strong neodymium magnets. It's, it's so powerful that it's difficult to separate them. And this is an old syringe, just the barrel. We are just interested in the plastic part. It's like a, a little cylinder. You put the magnets and they are slightly loose. So they, move. they can reciprocate. Here's a piece of rubber, foam rubber. It's like a stopper. Now on the barrel you tie 1000 turns of very thin insulated copper wire. We use 36 gauge, scrape both the ends and so that the copper is exposed and what you do is you just put a small LED. And if I just shake this, well the LED lights up. And this is almost magical for children that we are no more consumers, we can also produce a little bit of electricity. <laughs> so I think it's very joyous. Now imagine the thrill of a child in an Indian village which is not electrified. To, to move on a bit, uh, yes. can you explain us how you actually arrived here? What happened for you? Well, for, for you see, I did my engineering from a good college in India. Right. And uh, that was way back in 1975. So I came to work in a truck plant here. After two years, I just realized that I was not born to make trucks. It was becoming a bit boring because at the end of the day, the management is just interested in the number of components you make. And that's when I took one year off from my job and went to a village science program. This is a program started in the early 70s uh, by a person, his name is Anil Sadgopal, did a PhD from Caltech, was a molecular biologist. And he went to this uh, village in central India and set up one of the first non-government organizations. And because he came from the world of academic science, he realized, he realized the horrendous way science was taught in village schools. Children mugged up and they spit out. But they do nothing with their hands. And this is a very ridiculous way of learning science. So they gave a proposal to the government and they started an experiment in 16 schools. In 78, when I joined them, they were expanding to the whole district, 250 schools. And this is the place which gave me a glimpse. Uh, the first month when I went, I made something like this. This is the matchstick models using cycle valve tubes, matchsticks. And this fascinated me. I said, this is much better use of my engineering knowledge to use it for the education of the children. And uh, I think this fascination has never waned. And uh, I've been privileged to, in the last 30 years, uh, to go to many, many thousands of schools. And everywhere I go, I see a lot of hope in the eyes of the children. There is hunger for science. And if, you know, children don't go, want to go to the toilet. They don't want to eat their breakfast. 
And they're so fascinated by doing things. Now this is very, very, it's, it's heady, it's very overpowering. And I think uh, some of my greatest uh, joys I have uh, received are the children because I can see them happy, I can see them making things. And that's something which is preparing me all these years. Can you explain us uh, a little bit your activity inside the science yes. center here? Yes, I, I came over here uh, about 10 years back. Uh, um, for 14 years I was in New Delhi. My wife is from Pune. So we were shifting in 2003, we shifted. We've got a very small team, very focused, very passionate team. And every day now, we document our work. Today we have close to 1,000 toys from trash. And we don't call them science experiments, we call them toys from trash. And there's a reason to it. The horrendous way science is taught in schools, children say, no science for us. So we call them toys, but they are very well thought out science experiments. Uh, so that, you know, uh, d during the fun of doing it, I think they would be imbued with the love of science. So we look at a bunch of very hard, hard working people. We make short films. Uh, today we have uh, 4,300 videos on YouTube. In the last four years, 25 million children have viewed the films in 18 languages. We always look for collaborators, like you came and you've done seven, eight films to French. The whole purpose, the vision statement is that our work must help the poorest children on earth, children in Latin America, children in large parts of Asia, uh, children in the African continent who have no access to quality science. And if we can show them the possibilities of doing science with simple stuff, I think it would ignite their minds, it would spark them, and that's the vision of this place. I heard you saying today, um, there's a beauty into science. Yes. Can you talk about it more? Because well, <laughs> I, I, I like this sentence very no, no, no. This is, you see, I, many, many people think that, you know, the arts should be arts and the sciences should be sciences, and the twain must never meet. But I think, uh, you know, maths is all about patterns in numbers, in the world of numbers. There's such beautiful patterns. If you look at the world of fractals, you know, it would put some of the great art to, I'm not saying that, you know, it is very good, great art. So there is, uh, we, like, and we often make some toys which are also very beautiful. They may not be much science. Like for instance, this is just a spiral piece of wire. And these are cut pieces of straw. And if I just hold it upside down, it's like a moving rainbow. These are like liquid crystals. And it's a very fascinating phenomenon. Now, I do not know what principle of science, but this is beautiful. Visually, it's a treat. And there is, so there is, I think, at the, uh, in, the, in the world of numbers, there are lots of patterns. In science, the deeper you probe, the more those patterns repeat themselves. And you see, they're very beautiful patterns. So I think, uh, you know, this is a very artificial division of knowledge between the arts and the sciences. Because if knowledge was one whole, then these are two, uh, two sides of the same coin. Uh, to, to finish with, uh, just a few words for your, for your French colleagues who... Well, well I had, uh, seven years back, I had went, I had, I had visited uh, uh, Lyon at the invitation of uh, Petit de Bois, and um, I had a very, very nice time. The French people were extremely kind and they were full of art. Uh, for five days I roamed around the roads of Paris and everywhere there were people drawing, sketching on the roadside. Uh, near shopping, sh shopping uh, uh, shops, near offices, so it was a, quite a sight. And they extremely kind people. I had a very, very nice time. And I, my, my, my request uh, is that uh, uh, there would be more science popularizers who would, would dub some of our videos in French, because uh, many of the African countries were one time French colonies. So if they are in French, there'd be many, many poor children in Africa who would be benefited. So this is my small humble request. All right. Thank you very much. Thank then. you. Thank you. Great to meet you. Okay. Great time. <laughs>